Mister's the other option that I'm looking at for Hunt Summer that's not yet banned away. Right. But with Urgot being taken off the table, things like the Aatrox and the Silas are still up and available. We are playing on patch 9.2, not 9.3. So still a few more of those power picks available to teams. And this is not quite the draft I was anticipating. Urgot was something that slipped through many times last week and now finds itself in the ban pool. We've heard a lot of pro players saying that right now in, in the meta, there's just so many ridiculously strong champions and you're kind of just like picking your poison as to what OP champions you want to let through. What do we want to play against this game? Uh, and that's the perfect example, the Akali. So you might imagine this is going to be the Aatrox coming through from, uh, from Misfits as well, uh, flexing these champions as well. It's a beautiful thing about uh, this day and age with League of Legends is everything's a flex pick. And Silas is, is, a, is the man on our lips because, again, he's a ridiculously strong flex pick, both solo laners and in the jungle as well. Okay, so Max Law has played six different junglers in six games. Ooh. Okay, so every game a unique pick. He pulled out the Nunu, um, he's shown us the Karthus, uh, Olaf, Sejuani. He's in the Zen. In the he's in, in the Zen. Where I have would to you feel like, like his beard silence. helps with that. Oh, sorry. No, you could go in two different directions there, <laughs> weren't we? No, I would. I, I personally, I love playing Silas Jungle, but I recognise that he has some real issues in that role, uh, and I honestly feel like in a professional setting, you're most likely going to see him. Uh, in a solo, in the solo lanes, uh, unless there's a very specific draft that you can put him into the jungle, uh, not not hard matchup specifically. Uh, but we have seen the Aatrox has actually slipped through here. Uh, this is something that is a little bit surprising because Schalke, in my opinion, is one of the strongest teams in the LEC right now. I put them as the second best team, second best team around next to only G2. That's high praise. Do you really want to give them Kali and Aatrox? And well, Misfits don't seem to mind playing versus that. We'll see whether Shao Kart decide to do that. Yeah, it might go through the draft, and this is a very different type of ban. Lissandra is one of the most powerful, effective tools in the meta right now. Yep. Seen a lot of um, social media criticism, shall we say, on uh, the balance of Lissandra yes. uh, on live. But it's a very different look. Um, Febivin has only got one game uh, on the champion. Gorilla, this will be his first Tom Kench. A lot more of a reactive support as opposed to the likes of the Alistair that we've seen him play, the Rakan, for example. And of course, there's upsets Ezreal, probably the best Ezreal in Europe right now. Most likely, yeah, 100% agree with you there. And the thing is, as well, by taking this up, uh, taking this Ezreal on upset, you also deny it from Misfits uh, and Tom Kench Ezreal is a really solid 2v2 that you don't really want to play against. So uh, no real surprise to see that. We are seeing a Varus on the side of Misfits. That's, uh, I mean, they had to pick their AD carry there, and let's go. Talk to me about what you see about this bottom lane then. This is this is fairly different. You know, Hans Summers carries Lucian, Draven, Kaiser, Callista, yep. Vayne. Um, you know, a lot more, let's say, aggressive, fast, very, very good, obviously, in multiple stages of the game, but it's a different look for this duo. And we still haven't exactly got the pieces of the full comp because the jungle and solo lane, uh, top lane is going to be very interesting. Absolutely. I, I think that it really does come down to what you're picking after this because Misfits operate best when they're playing through that bot lane. And Varus has really good setup for roams and for ganks. Uh, and then when you pair him with the Tom Kench as well, you get rid of his biggest weaknesses, which is the fact that he has zero mobility. So uh, Han Summer as well, extremely talented player, absolutely can pilot this champion. I think that he's it is a difficult champion to pilot, pilot in the current meta. Yeah. Uh, and again, we'll see what Shao could also uh, round their kit off with here, because you're going to want to target that Varus, and depending on what Misfits pick, it can either be extremely hard to do that, so in which case you're just going to give up and say, you know what, fine. Protect that virus. We don't want to touch him. We're not going to be able to get near to him anyway. Uh, and, and that's why you ban things like the Camille, because it's very good at isolating carries out of position. Okay, so what junglers are still up? I mean, Silas, Sejuani. Uh, we're looking for Memento and Max Law to lock in the respective junglers, but with Nocturne taken off the pool, as well as Gragas, it's a whole bunch. Oh, we and Cassia's still open as well. Interestingly enough, for Cassiopeia, um, definitely one of the most banned champions. 27 out of 30 games. Yeah. And of the three games it went through, it has zero wins. Not a single I mean, win. Teams just forgot how to play it. <laughs> exactly. They weren't used to playing it. No, it's... it's there's the least in pick here. Not a, not a bad uh, blind jungle jungle pick either. The Zin Tao is still open if, if Shaka want to go towards that. Or the Sejuani, completely depending. Uh, personally, I think that Sejuani will probably be a, a better choice here just to round out uh, your composition because it's very difficult when you've got like the Jace and the Akali in your solo laners, uh, you know, as the game goes on, it will be a bit difficult to function if you did take that carry jungler. So, so Juwani going to be locked in here for Schalke and now just 
uh, their support. And to be honest, you don't even need to go full supporty like they've got with the Tom Kench. You can have something more aggressive, like this Pike being hovered here. And of uh, course, for Ignard, very important because right. he's playing his former team. Yeah, 100%. Like, he, he, he wants to smash these guys. And if he wants to do it in style, then he wants to pick something that's, uh, that's aggressive and can make, uh, make moves. Do you remember when he was on Misfits playing Wells? Blitz. Oh, oh my yes! god! <laughs> the last second change to Blitz. Going I was looking... a second too late. Fox to call and it. I were longingly looking into each other's eyes and we missed the draft. Don't say that. The fish show is going to stab me when I walk out of the. Uh... Mate, he's long gone. Didn't you see the top of show last yeah, week? Yeah, I did, to be fair. You can't he's move on. Old mate. news. The fish show's dead and buried to me. This is the huge benefit, though, of... of uh, please do, do that. Do it. Do it. Do it. Lock it in. Yes! Oh, okay, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Blitzcrank and Silas. Nice. I'm so hyped about this game now. It looks like it's going to be in that top lane as well. So as is going to be playing the first Silas we'll see here in the LEC into the Jace. Oh, that's uh, trial by fire there for Silas. That's not an easy lane, but still. Oh, this is going to be a really interesting one. So what I'm really looking for here as well with Silas is he's going to have to roam around a lot if he wants to get use out of that ultimate because you can't really steal it from Jace. If you steal Jace's ulti, what happens is you just get the cannon form. So you can use like his, his, his shock blast, the W, the acceleration gate. Right. Uh, you can use those abilities, but you can't go into hammer form. Correct. And it's not, it's not really like having an ulti. Uh, but having said that, if you can steal the Sejuani ulti, even this Akali ult, uh, you can... You can Totally diversify how you want to play. Yeah, and I mean, he, he added uh, Blitzcrank AoE Silence, Ezreal True Shot Barrage, and 9.2 yeah. hits like a truck. When he builds AP as well, AP, AP Ezo is actually nutty. It's crazy. Oh, man. Okay, now I have to be brutally honest. I'm terrified about casting Silas and Akali in team fights. Yeah. These two champions are so freaking mobile. And then we have to try and keep up with where Silas is hijacking ultimates. Boy, Silas steals a Kali as well. <laughs> I do not. I, I, I am very, very interested to see how this plays out. It was a last pick Silas. I was wondering if it was going to make it through the draft. And it is on Soez as well. One of the golden oldies, one of the most successful players here in Europe. And now he's going to get to try saying, can you teach an old dog new tricks? Uh, well, Soez is kind of like an immortal dog. Is he really old? Because he's been around forever, so yes, he's old. But he's he's as wily as the young ones. For anybody that knows Soez, we'll have to ask him if you think Silas is a dog champ or not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week four of the League of Legends European Championship. This is a battle to help determine second and third place. Schalke and Nulfia are five wins, one loss. Misfits, four wins, two losses. And I've been pretty impressed with Misfits early games. They've got a couple of cheeky level one kills. I remember them punishing Vitality um, before Vitality took over the game, but you see them already setting up, and if Memento or Odo step forward, uh, they're going to find a face full of Misfits. Yeah, well, we saw this in Ready Check as well. Frosk pointed this out, where in the early game, uh, Misfits have the best early game in the LEC, one of the most explosive games. Uh, early games. They're up by over 3,000 gold at 15 minutes. That's, that's honestly pretty crazy. That is re really crazy. Schalke, on the other hand, who are 5 and 1 team, are only up less than 700. Now, what do you make of that, right? I mean, we know explosive, we know it's snowball for misfits. Yeah. Do you think it, it's, it, do you think one style is better? Do you, you know, because it's, it's different, right? But yes. that doesn't mean bad. It, no, absolutely. It's different. It's not bad. I, the thing is, that I, I peg Schalke a tier above Misfits as far as just the strength of teams go, because whereas these early game stats are very impressive for Misfits' side, and you can argue in the meta right now with games going like 30 minutes or less than 30 minutes in Misfits' case, uh, you could argue, yeah, having a strong early game is extremely important. And, and whereas it is important, for me, I feel like Shao could do it very methodically. And, and as Frost perfectly, the analogy that Frost used was you paper cut people and then you team fight them. And, and I think that Shao are a very controlled team in the way that they play. Uh, they may not have as explosive an early, but you know that they're, they're controlled, they're methodical, and they'll bring it to uh, to the mid, mid lane, and, and then bam, that's all good. Well, let's see how it plays out. Um, I have to talk about this top lane. It is Silas. It is Oda Wamne taking on Soez. So first of all, these two players have faced off against one another 33 times. Soez holds the head-to-head -head record. He's won 20 times against Odo, and the next best player, or the next most frequently played, is Wicked. Right. So that's how long these two players have been competing. Um, Foxtrot, just before we started this game, I said to you, right, your, your YouTube series is about trying to teach people how to play the game. It didn't help me get better. 
Uh, but phone, oh help me understand Silas. What is what is this guy gonna do? What I mean, I heard you're a one trick. It's the only thing you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I right describe now. myself as a Silas one trick. If you've been watching my stream, you know I am 100% Silas one trick. I, he's really fun to play. Uh, the, the thing with Silas is his biggest weakness is he's a melee champion. So he does have so much stuff in his kit. He's got a he's got a shield. He's got some CC. He has ridiculous sustain on that W. If you ever see Silas less than 40% health, he'll press a button on you, and suddenly he's up to like 70, 80%. It's absolutely vile. Uh, but Silas is, is is totally grim as a champion, and I mean, we, we're going to see, he just has to survive early against Jason, and, and then he'll really kind of get going later Take on. going, and what you can see down there is, of course, just the skill animations for the first time that we are seeing. Silas, the W that you were talking about earlier, uh, Foxtrot, that's the Kingslayer. Um, point it out for me, when you, when you see the HP. Well, yeah, so you'll help. be able to see. When it looks like he's dead and he's not dead, that's the W right there. I mean, look at the CS difference that top lane already. I told you, like, Jace is such a hard lane to play against to anyone, especially melee champions. Yeah, but the same is true in the mid lane, right? Febivin is up 22 to 16. Lissandra is doing pretty well into the early levels. Uh, Abadage is Akali, um, so he's pushing this wave in. Of course, Abadage can farm well under tower, so it's not going to be as substantial. Um, but this is a good sign, and Lissandra into Akali is one of these soft counters uh, that you can use to effectively control Akali. Akali still has that heal on this patch. This is 9.2, not 9.3. So uh, getting pushed under the tower there, she will be able to sustain up. It's not the end of the world. And we will probably... Oh, nice. Oh, work. my bird. Look at that. Rocket grab into Power Fist. The Devourer spits out Hansama. Gorilla threatening a re-engage, but there was no one to back him up. And that's the thing. This is, this is the exact Varus plus Tom Kench. You're seeing it right there. Varus, low mobility, gets caught out. Tom Kench, no worries, mate. I'll gobble you up, stick you in my belly, and you're all sorted. Well, wow, very nicely done. Of course, happy Lunar New Year to everybody celebrating over in the East. Um, and there is a beautiful story here with Ignor landing the first rocket grab onto yeah. Hunt Summer. He tweeted yesterday that he's been waiting to play against Misfits for a year. Of course, Ignor went to play in LCK, played for BBQ Olivers, didn't go particularly well. Um, and now he's returned to Schalke and currently the second best team tied with Vitality in LEC. And Foxtrot, you reckon Schalke have got the edge in this matchup? No summoner spells were blown in the duel, but just look at Ignor. He's, he's fishing. He's looking for a catfish to catch. 100%. This is what you do on Blitzcrank. This is why it's so fun to watch as well. Mario was so hyped to see it when he, when he picked it up. I, I think most action will come outside of the lane, however. I think that it is the only way you can really catch someone in that bot lane is if you hook the Tom Kench. Okay. Because else Han Summers is too safe. Tom Kench will, will eat him. Uh, but if you hook Tom Kench, then, I mean, you've hooked a Tom Kench. Like, it's yeah. not exactly and the Varys, most. Varus is just going to free hit. Grey Health yeah. is going to be annoying. Precisely. So we've got an even CS game right now uh, in the duo lane. Advantages for Febby mid. You can see it's plus 15 at five minutes. Odo's got plus 10 up in the top lane. And this is, uh, this is looking good for, for a Shulker that has been this stable, this consistent... What was the word you used earlier? Intelligent? Yeah, methodical, yeah. 100%. This is, this is it. This is where, you know, Misfits do have that better early game. But Shulker are totally okay to just play... To, well, just like this, you know. You, just, you don't have any significant lead, but it's fine. Uh, because if you, if you look at the champions that, that Schalke have as well, uh, it, it, it's okay. You know, Jace is expected to, to do a bit better in this top side. Uh, and these level 6 power spikes, especially in this mid lane with Kali, uh, it is really where it's at. You know, you, you're not expecting to do too much pre-6. You are expecting to get bullied around a little bit. Okay, so look at the numbers you talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, average game time for Misfits lower. You can see the gold difference at 15 is plus 3k. Uh, that's what I really want to focus on right now, because over the next 8 minutes, we're going to have some you know, tools coming up. Tom Kench can look for some roams, uh, Chain of Corruption from Hans Sama, uh, Febby's gonna have his ulti too, so, you know, is Misfits likely to make a play? Do you think it's gonna happen? Or, you know, how would you expect the next 10 minutes to play out? I actually think is gonna be one to pull the trigger first, uh, unless Misfits go for a Dragon play, which they could do, uh, because I, I feel like the, the playmaking ultimate coming through from Memento with the racial prison on Sejuani, uh, if you walk to that top side, for example, or even if they caught Maxwell out of position, that is a very, very... That's a, yeah, but basically you're going to get a kill there, essentially. So uh, that's what I would imagine if we're looking for the proactive play. But uh, speaking of a proactive play, this is, this is really cheeky here. You can do this in your Solico games as well. You see that this uh, Scuttlecraft vision is down in the river. It doesn't see inside the pit. So if you have a way to get inside the pit that isn't through the entrance, then they don't even... The enemy team will not know that you're doing it. So Shalk is going to get here a little bit too late. And exactly as predicted, Foxtrop. Good call. Misfits, they go for the dragon. 
They pick it up uncontested thanks to a cheeky vision play yep. on the start. And Ignar, rocket grab, rocket grab! Oh, that was. He just that can't was do good. it. Well it, played. It's just painful. Like, it's just. The, you know, time Kench plus low mobility carries. It's just so hard to punish them. And, you know, Devour does have a long cooldown, but so does the rocket grab. Like, it, it, it is tricky. And, you know. <sighs> It's gonna be, it's gonna be very hard, honestly, for for Shalka to to be able to punish that bot lane. Okay, so bot lane gonna be very difficult, but if you look at the mini map, pressure going on. Okay, Soas decides to jump in, commits with the full combo, but does not go for any sort of ultimate because there's nothing to steal. Can't change between forms. So Jason right. will be very happy into this hijack Silas uh, uh, champion. Hey, this is what I'm just not really convinced about sticking Silas in that top lane, or at least for the lane phase, it's going to be very hard, because he doesn't have an ult. He legit just won't have an ulti this game. Well, Memento does. Memento's caught up Fevivin. Fevivin's going to use the Claw of Doom to escape. Hasn't even used his ulti. Hasn't even used the flash. Looks for Omidagi. What was that? Questionable. That's what that was. We might have some more coming through. Flash into Chain of Corruption. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Memento gets dunked in the mid lane. Oh, two kills going over to Misfits. The explosive early game on display right there. But, but honestly, that was that was Schalke's play. They're the ones who started that. I, I think maybe a little bit too over-adventurous is the word I'd use there, but definitely not what they were looking for. I have heard so many questions around Febivin discussing, is he good? Is it NA Febby or is it EU Febby? And the experience that this player brings up against the rookie mid laner of Abadage, he didn't panic at all. This is, I'm just not 100% sure what Shaka thinks they're gonna get out of this, because he's still got, Febivin still has his ulti, and, and like, I just, that, I'm trying to break this one yeah. down, Trez, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find the words. But it is a, it is a good run coming through from Gorilla here. This is this is the, the benefit of picking that Tom Kench. Not only are you a very reactive support, like he's reacting to Blitzcrank's rocket grabs to, to protect Han Summer, but you can be proactive with that teleport in with your ulti, the Abyssal Voyage, and good setup from Han Summer with, with those chains and second kill on the board. Yeah, very nicely done. And it, it looked to me like Schalke were considering a dive top. You know, it, it looked like Memento yeah. was moving towards Odo's lane, Abadage stepped into ward. Uh, but they went fishing for Febby, and unfortunately, looks like they found a shark and pulled him under. Yeah, that, I mean, you don't want to go fishing play. in those waters. That was uh, <laughs> that was not what you wanted to do. So, ten minutes into the game, Misfits have got about eight hundred gold up. They've got themselves a Mountain Drake. They've got a kill on both their mid and their bot carries. Um, you can see first items already picked up with the Proto Belt for Febivin. So he's just going to be very, very comfortable. And you know, both teams are going to be pretty happy that they continue to scale up. And the observers are just toggling the vision there, as you can see Misfits now pushing into uh, Shalka's jungle. So Misfits, they get ahead early, but it's not the same explosive road. Remember, average gold leader 50 was 3,000. It's barely 1,000 now. Yeah, I, I think when you're looking at this game to, to progress and how these teams want to win the games... Oh, there's the armor coming through. Oh, take a look at that. Flash Lord gets the Sonic Wave, resonating strike. Nice. And Misfits send a pretty resounding, hey, Shalka. This is how you dive mid. And that, yeah, that's how it's done. <laughs> this is, yeah, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> but this, you see, there's like only two plates left as well, but oh. All right, let's take a look right at this. Up. Big trade, remember, Kingslayer's not going to be too useful just yet. So is still sitting in high health, couple of shots missing. It ended a bit more awkwardly than I was building it up for me. That, well, that is the benefit of Silas. This is Silas in a nutshell right here, is if you're taking these kind of small skirmish trades, you will probably come out on top because you do have the sustain in your W, so. Uh, he, he gets a little bit of health up back at the end there, plus a shorter box of damage too, so he is very hard to trade against. But, I mean, it's only like a 20 CS difference, it's really not that much right now. Talk to me what um, Silas's role is going to play as the game progresses. True Shot Barrage! Oh, Ooh, that was so close! Never the observers do that, I always think it's going to steal. We'll come back to the discussion in a moment or two. Soas gets pulled backwards, can't use the hijack just yet. Looking to throw it down, won't even get a chance. The amount of chain CC just obliterates him under the, the, the river there. Uh, but to go back to the question, what role do you want Soez, or do you expect to see Soez play in terms of this team comp? Is he gonna be looking at team fight? Is he gonna split push? Well, this is what I'm, I'm just, honestly, I'm, I'm not really a fan of the Silas pick in okay. this draft. Because I don't think that you can split push versus an Akali or versus a Jace. I, I think that they will beat you out. 
so really that leads you to going for either picks, playing with your team for picks, or in the team fights. Uh, but again, you don't really have great ultimates to do that. The, the Sejuani ult is perfect, it's, it's great, you can take that, but you really need more than one because the internal cooldown of stealing the same champion's ulti is actually pretty high. Okay. So he's not going to be able to consistently every team fight have a Sejuani ult up, and it's like, so, so what do you, so you want to do? You obviously want to protect Han Summer, but the only way you can do that really is with that Sej ulti. And it's just, it's just a little bit tough, honestly, looking at what he's going to be able to do in this game. He might just look a little lost as we go on. Unless okay. he can make the picks, you know. I mean, he's down 30 CS, uh, a little bit of thrift jumping at the moment. We saw the gold between players a moment ago. Uh, Soas was down 1,000 gold, but Febivan was up 1,500 gold. And now with the tower, uh, first blood bonus secured, Misfits accelerate that lead. 1.5k. But they need to go bot and use this Herald now. There's only one minute until the plates fall. So there we go. The Herald's going to be put down here. That is a risky place to put that Herald. <laughs> Ignar could have just grabbed him there and just completely interrupted it. Memento doesn't have an ultimate. And I think uh, with a fully charged Shelly boop, that should take at least one of those plates. Are they going to... Oh, get the eye just before and we'll almost take the second plate as I'm well. I'm actually not 100 sure how the interaction works. They weren't close to the tower. How do they, who gets the plates in that situation? No, I think the gold's missed. So if, it's like if yeah. the tower goes down and no one's around, but that's wasted awful. gold. <laughs> Rook, I don't, I, I've actually got a feeling that someone got the gold there. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna put my hand up and say I'm ignorant to this situation. I wasn't looking at the uh, I don't think misfits are that player bad. cams or the players. I was actually following uh, Shelly to see if she got that second plate. I'm going to quickly do a cheeky little rewind here. All right, while you check on that, I'll set up for the dragon fight. Misfits looking to take the Infernal Drake, but Abadage, Ignar's coming in, the mental flashes forward, steals it away from Maxlaw. Maxlaw gets devoured up as Hunt Summit's forced to run for his life. One, two, three kills of the dragon. Femivin and Solas like lambs to a slaughter. This is an ace on the cards for Shulka. They're just looking for the solo laners. That's a stun up onto Soez. Tries to escape with his life. Here comes up to here comes Ignar. That's four. And it's only Febby that escapes. The intelligent, methodical Schalke. There they are. Exactly. Not quite on time. It's only 14 minutes, not 15. But what we want to see out of these guys and what they're so good at doing, waiting for the enemy teams to make a mistake and playing the smart, intelligent League of Legends. So Memento's going to start this one off with a steal onto the Inferno. Now, that is juicy in itself. But in this situation, Han Summer can't get the protection that he needs. And this is it. Look what Soa does in this fight specifically. Look at the, look at the Silas ulti. He steals the Akali ult, but legit, what can you do in this situation? Everyone's on full health. He's really not useful in this fight at all. He uses the Akali ult to almost escape, but even doesn't get that. Honestly, that's just like, I'm really not trying to pin that on Soa specifically. That's just, that's just a difficult that's, situation. That just sucks for Misfits overall. And it's a, different pl a difficult place to be in. I mean, Misfits started that Drake. They were aware that Shalka yeah. were, you know, in the area. And of course, that just gives Shalka, uh, you know, they've arrested back control. Five kills to three, they're up in gold. Um, Odo has already got the Black Cleaver completed in the Serrated Dirk, plus 40 CS. Abadag is closing the gap as well. And yeah. Uh, it's just a mistake that Misfits shouldn't really have uh, taken. No, and, and the thing is that Misfits' primary threat this game is Han Summer on that Varus. And to be fair, that's not bad in itself because Han Summer is good and he can take, he can shoulder that burden. But the problem is he's got one item and he needs more. <laughs> like, you, you can't rely on him in that, in that situation. So taking a full-blown team fight like that, you're really not going to come out on top if you're Misfits. Uh, and it's just, you know, they've got to wait a little bit longer here. I'm curious about this Akali ulti, because he used that, and no way in hell is the, is the cooldown up for him to take it again. So, that might be a spectator bug. Hashtag just observe a thing. Uh, observe a climb. Not 100% sure, but... Nope. Essential, but. And it's the first uh, Silas we've watched. Febvin, no flash available. He's going to be able to use the claw once again. Doesn't use the proto belt. Doesn't use the ultimate. Doesn't need to. No, just really, really calm and collected play. If we if we take a look at the right side of your screen, you've got a picture of a handsome man, Silas. No, that's not me. <laughs> then you've got a blind man. Then you've got Lissandra. And just to the bottom right there, do you see that little green splashy thing? What, what does that do for me, Fashion? That Shop? is called Aftershock, and it's absolutely vile. And that's why you can't kill her. <laughs> because she's got so many things. Oh, Febbin, that was so beautiful. <laughs> Aftershock wasn't the reason that time. No, but, Aftershock wasn't the reason that we'll, time. <laughs> I will give you hands. That was his script. So that's what that one was. Oh, nicely done. <laughs> uh, zero ping land. Nicely done, Febby. 
And now, of course, Max Law running for his life. Ignor, flash, rocket grab, catches Hans Summer. Now Gorilla forced to run for his life. He's already flashed. Hans Summer's gone very, very low. He's escaped with his life. Chain of Corruption is not going to do enough to slow them down. And zabadaki has got one kill looking for Gorilla. Looking for Tom Kench. There's no support from the solo laners. There's no teleport from Soaz. And, of course, Fairby unable to join the fight. Two more kills to Schalke. Look, look at where that... Look at where he died. Look at the map state. Like, there are towers all around him. And he's just dying right in his base. I mean, th this only happens because Shalker is so far ahead at this point, the Misfits just can't stop them. Like, if you can walk that far in and get away with it, then there's something going wrong with, with, with the game right now. And it's troubling because, I mean, there's multiple reasons why this troubles me, Trevor. But the biggest one is that Upset is playing Ez, and we know what he's like. Like, yeah. he's absolutely... Yeah, he, he's a real menace in that I, champion. I'll give you some stats really quickly. Three games played, two wins, one loss, 6-5-15 before we had today's kills. And Ignar, so confident playing forward. Yeah, just a flash grab, and, and this is it. Is like, if you hit someone, you're relying on Tom Kench to save, and Tom Kench is not tanky enough. He doesn't have the team support to be able to survive if he's the one taking the bullet. And, and they got both in that situation and as well. Do you know what that reminds me? When Ignar played Blitzcrank at Worlds against yes. SKT in yes. 2017, Misfits were red side that game, and they were chasing SKT into the blue side jungle blue buff. Yep. And Ignar flashed forward to catch Faker time and time again. He's doing it today. This time it's against his old team. It was against Hans Sama. Feels like he's definitely going fishing. It actually feels like revenge kills are on the rise. Yeah. You know, Soaz took down Whip on Fnatic last week. Ignar's on track to take down Misfits with a 3k gold lead. And there's another dragon. Now, the last time this dragon was started, it went really, really badly for Misfits. It's going to go really badly for Misfits again. They just have to give this one up. The Shock Blast there right into the face of two members of Misfits. That's not a good start. And, you know, Schalke just, they have control of all of this game right now. They they need to make sure that they don't just, like, they, they Misfits have good catch. So Schalke need to make sure, that, like in this situation, for example, the upset understands that there is potential that Tom Kench still exists with an ultimate, you know, Febivan. We, we've got the Glacial Prison there. Like, it, it, I mean, he does have Sash, but still, like, there's a chance that Upset can get caught out. Uh, not in that specific scenario, he's fine, right? But he just needs to keep being aware that, in theory, this stuff can happen. And when you start getting, when you start picking people out of position like that, that's how Misfits pour their way back into this game. All right, Ignar, once again, will find oh. the Devour Gorilla! It's no. That's a donation and a half! Yo, that Gorilla is it. ate the hook. Oh, good lord, that is... That is the reverse Tom Kench. That is not what Tom Kench... Oh, gosh. No, absolutely not. That's hideous. Not. And you know, know what? Nice all, to see that. all credit to Schalke now. We were talking about the stylistic differences. We talked about it in Ready Check. We talked about it in the pregame. We showed you the stats about how Schalke are this controlled and calculated team. Yep. And they are stepping up. We just got a glimpse there of uh, the Stuckenschneider. Amazing, hiding uh, in uh, the camp. Can't quite see where he is right now. Grinning. Because, of course, he's working with uh, the ERL squad here. And, um, I mean, Schalke is going to be very happy. And for Misfits, now we need to see, can they play from behind? They're down 6K. They've got a very, very difficult task ahead of them. And this is Schalke's game to lose. I'm going to say something here. Okay. That's going to trigger Misfits fans across the globe. I'm getting flashbacks to summer, late summer 2018. Ooh. Ooh, the crowd. A lot of oohs. Definitely a few oohs. We'll give him a chance. We'll give him a chance to, to, to expand let, on let this. Let me point. justify it. So they're off to a racing start. It's not quite 9 and 0 like they were in the, in the first half of the summer split. But they just look like, unless they have a clear win condition to play through Han Summer, that they're just not very effective. And I honestly thought that bringing in Soaz and Feverven might kind of change that up a little bit. Um, honestly, I will be. Brutally honest and say that I think Soez is handcuffed by his own champion this game. Okay. But right now, oh. you know, I don't... Oh, good lord. Look at that damage. Upset's True Shot Barrage is on cooldown. And Memento's waiting in the wings. So how do Misfits claw this back? Right, put, put your Optimist hat on for a second. Optimist hat on, uh, assuming no disconnects in the studio. <laughs> then I, I feel like, you know, again, you, you, ha you have to find someone out of position. Like, you have you have uh, the Sandra to, to try and catch someone. You have the Tom Kench to try and catch someone. The follow-up of CC is really good as well, like with Han Summer too. So here we go, trying to catch someone. All right, Chain of Corruption caught upset, but he uses the QSS, instantly escapes. Doesn't even spread to lock people down. There's double Infernals for Shalka with a very high damage comp. 
And they're just continuing the siege. Three towers to one. I mean, it was an optimistic play. Some might say desperate. But in this situation, this is what you got to do. Soez has, has... I don't even know if he even has the Akali ult here. I'm assuming he does. Yeah, oh, he has the Akali ult. There we go. go. Just went into Akali mode. Soez now can't go through. Oh! Abadage finds the burst damage. Now Max Law's in trouble. Here comes Abadage. Dragon's Rage does nothing. Absolutely holds Max Law in pace because the Power Fist knocked him up. That's two more kills to Shalka. I think they got themselves a tower or almost got themselves a tower as well. And look at the bounties. 500, 450, yep. 950, 750. Shalka are smashing misfits. Yeah, and you know, and this, they're, they're smashing, smashing misfits, but this is that's misfits how I get back into the game, right? Yeah. You can't play those bounties. It's going to be a lot harder to get back into the game if you lose this Baron, but what are you going to do about it? Your jungler's dead, your top lane's dead. That's, uh, that's free for Shalka right there. Oh. And, you know, the game plan is just exactly the same as we, what we saw them try to do in that mid lane. Where we saw the chains of questions coming out of, of Han Summer, the follow-up from Feathervan. I mean, it whiffed, it didn't work, but that's what misfits have to do. And it's very difficult to do that because if people start buying sashes, like there's already one on upset. If other people start getting it, it's going to be even harder. So this is uh, this is the Silas Akali 1v1. Now, Soez has stolen the Akali ulti and you see him use it right there. The downside is Soez has one Akali ability, but Akali has four Akali abilities. And four is greater than one. Abadar comes out on top of that one. Honestly, that's just uh, Max Lord's a little bit optimistic there on that one go. as well. There but, we go. But you know, it's just. It, I don't know. Silas, he's not going to be able to do anything against Akali or Jace, yeah. and it's. They're too it's far really ahead. Tough. I mean, yeah. uh, got the Luden's Echo, and, you know, again, just uh, uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard, a Ruby Crystal. It's just not a lot there for Soas to work no. with. This Silas. It's the first game of LEC, it's the first time we're seeing it's top lane. Is it a trap card or is it like draft dependent where it can work? Yeah, I, I think it's draft dependent, definitely. Like, I, I've, I've not really liked it in this game. Bear in mind, you know, this is literally the first time we've seen this, so yeah. preliminary thoughts about all this stuff, please don't. You know, burn me at the sake or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I unfortunately, my... I haven't watched any of the other regions. You know, yeah. you see Japan, Brazil last night over in uh, the Super League, Orange League, uh, Origins, uh, ERL squad actually played it in the jungle, um, which I, was a surprise to me. I really think they. So he's got the Sejuani ult. I was going to say, I really think the Silas is very dependent on the uh, enemy team as to how how you can play him, because if there are a lot of team fight utilities on the enemy team. Then say say Ignar's playing his his Leona, which he likes to play as well. If you can steal Leona all as well, yeah. then again, much easier for you to group up to play these team fights. Uh, Ooh. But as it stands, you know this is this is with that. Okay, let's take let's a look go at for this. the pick. Yeah, I mean you can feel the tension building, Foxtrot, with <laughs> yes. Baron buff with a minute and a half to go. Shalka are sieging on multiple lanes. Look, they've got Abadagi down at the bottom. That's a okay. wave clear. That's a root. That's a lockdown chain of corruption. Set so twenty gold comes out. Okay, that's one kill, but it's on the man that has no bounty. So it is a smallest of victories. Actually, I take it back, it's still a loss. You've lost a tower bottom. You're about to lose a tower top. You're about to lose a tower middle. Misfits are down 10,000 gold. And Shalka continue to prove that they are the real deal. Under, like, these, these guys are too much. Like, Misfits have, have tried, and they're gonna keep trying, but it's, it's difficult, Shalka is so far ahead. Yeah, Memento super tanky right now, doesn't take enough damage. Oduwam is completely left alone, unchecked in the top lane. He's playing P-V-E-L-E-C. The inhibitor is going to drop as Abadage will take one down the bottom lane. Memento will be able to escape with his life. True Shot Barrage uh -oh. comes down and here comes Abadage. Somebody order the cleanup crew because Misfits are all over aisle four. Shelka take them down. And what looked like a slow laning phase was exactly what Shelka wanted. It was clean. It was calculated, and it was a crisp win for Schalke over Misfits. Schalke doing Schalke things.